We've talked about how the sauropods pneumatic system freed their neck skeleton to get more volume per kilogram to support and leverage that neck around, but having a neck full of air could also be a hindrance. As a sauropod was growing, long before its neck hit the point where it was in danger of buckling under its own weight, wouldn't it run into the dead space problem? The windpipe itself holds a volume of air, which the animal has to expel before it can exhale its spent air and pull in before it can get any fresh air to the lungs. For animals like us that breathe tidally, there is a limit to how long our windpipe can be before the energy requirement to take a breath is unrealistically large, or we just need far more volume than is possible. Whales find ways around this, but they are aquatic and therefore cheating. Sauropods and other animals that breathe like them had a couple of ways of getting around the dead space problem. Having a bunch of accessory air sacs in addition to your lungs means that each breath takes in such a volume of air that you can take up the slack or play out the slack with each breath. But also having parabronchial gas exchange with unidirectional flow through breathing means that even if they do swallow some stale air, they can still make some use of it. So I lied earlier, actually our growing sauropod would have no problem breathing at all. It's just another way that their avian-like respiratory system permitted sauropods to get so big. <laughs>